Hey, what's up? So there is a lot of misinformation online about online coaching, and I wanted to try and clear some things up. So big question is how long does it take to start making money as a coach, whether life coach, fitness coach, business coach, whatever kind of coaching it is that you do. Uh, and if you do a quick search on YouTube on how to start a coaching business, you get some pretty wild claims. Uh, things like this kid who says he can be built a multi-million dollar coaching business in three and a half months. Or this woman who, if you believe the thumbnail, made $8 million selling a PDF. Now, all I can say about that is that must have been one hell of a read. <laughs> and then there's this guy who says that uh, he's going to help teach you how to start a multi-million dollar health coaching business in 12 months or less. Now, to be fair, I, I don't know anything about these coaches, so I can't speak to their character or even to the quality of their programs. But what I do know, after working in this industry for 15 years and helping hundreds of people launch and scale coaching businesses, is that these wild claims are at best an exaggeration, um, and I, I think they're really deceptive. Because the real problem with this type of content, or I guess the bigger problem with this type of content, is that it sends a signal that if you're not a millionaire coach inside of 12 months, that you must be doing something wrong. When in reality, you've just been fed a lot of really bad information. Uh, so I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about starting a coaching business and a bit about entrepreneurship in general to help set, really just set your expectations correctly. And by the time we're done, you're going to have a really clear understanding of what it's going to take to, to start making the kind of money that all of these gurus claim that you can make. Um, so when most experts talk about coaching, they oversimplify. And they do it in an effort to make it seem easier than it really is. I mean, just nail your niche, right? You've heard that. And create a product and then just tell people about it and your business will take off. And it makes sense that they would do that because the more, the easier they make it seem, the easier it will be for them to get you to join their coaching programs. And the other thing they spend a whole lot of time talking about, especially inside of their marketing, is all the really touchy-feely parts about coaching. They'll use words like impact and empowerment to kind of get you all excited about the good work that you're going to do in the world. They talk about how much the world needs your unique perspective or your unique voice and experience. Uh, like there's this massive group of people out there who are starving for coaching, but they just can't find anybody to help them, right? And that's appealing, I think, to people who are searching for, for, for more meaning and fulfillment in the work that they do, which to be honest, I think most coaches or especially aspiring coaches, that's something that they're looking for. But what is noticeably absent from the conversation is the fact that nobody needs coaching. Now, they might, they might benefit from it, right? But purchasing someone else's experience isn't a prerequisite. It's not a necessity for success. It's, it's a luxury. And the most difficult part about running a coaching business isn't in nailing your niche or even in building out your program. It's in finding people who have both a desire for the kind of change that you're offering them and then convincing them that you're the right person to help them get it. So when you see these claims, like I'm gonna show you how to launch your coaching business in 90 days, or you can launch your coaching business in a week, they're talking about all the easy stuff. And the reality is that there are, there are really six parts of a coaching business that you're gonna need to get right if you wanna succeed. And before we talk about money and how you make the money, how much money you can make, I think it's important that we go over kind of those six parts. So the first one is clarity on client and outcome. And this is different than your niche. It's not the same thing. And it's one of the biggest problems I see when I work with new coaches because if you don't get that right, then none of the rest of the business works. It's broken. And you have to be clear on exactly who you want to work with and what the outcome is that you offer. So what I hear from new coaches a lot are things like, well, hey, I want to help people advance in their career, or I want to help people live a healthier lifestyle. So the problem with that is that people, people is not a demographic, and living a healthy lifestyle is not something that people will pay for, right? At least not in the kind of numbers and for the types of fees that you're going to need to charge if you want to make any real money at it. Um, and, and let me just say this, it's great to have a servant's heart. And that's one of the cool things about the coaching industry in general is that most of the coaches generally, genuinely do 
want to help people. Uh, but you can't pay your rent with good intentions. People hire coaches for one of two reasons. Either they don't believe that they can actually get the result or the outcome on their own, or they figured out that the cost of doing it themselves is more expensive than just hiring you to help them. Uh, now, when I say, and when I say costs, I guess I don't just mean financial. So if you're in the relationship coaching industry and, and you're at the, some of the losses, maybe a loss in a marriage or the cost of spending, wasting years searching for the right person, right? But you got to get those two things, client and outcome correct. Now, the second is called method and mechanism. And you have to be clear. You need a clear and unique process, I guess, for getting the result that you're offering. And over the last five years, the coaching space in general has grown by about 62%, and it doesn't show any signs of slowing down. But what that means is that there are a lot of people who are claiming to be able to solve the sort of problem that your prospect has. And if you're in a mature industry like, say, fitness, marketing, um, uh, you know, business in general, uh, then there's a good chance that your prospect has already bought a course or has hired coaches and had some mixed results with it. And if you show up just saying the exact same thing, but wearing a different face, then you're just going to get ignored. And the truth is, I mean, most people selling coaching today don't have anything different to offer, which is why most of them are broke, despite what the, the image that they might portray online. Um, now, the third one is marketing and messaging. And that's why I say, this is why I say if you're not clear on the outcome and the client, then nothing else works right. Because if your message to potential clients is, well, I can help you improve your relationship or I can help you live a healthier lifestyle, you're not going to get any traction because it's way too vague for your prospects to apply any value to it. But once you've got the client and the outcome piece right, you still need to develop a marketing strategy to get people interested in working with you. And there are just a ton, almost an infinite number of strategies that you can use to do that. And so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to go through it in this video, but this is where you're going to spend the majority of your time as a new coach. And as I said, people are not going to beat down your door to work with you just because you launched a coaching business. You know, creating a steady stream of qualified leads that you can sell to is mo the most difficult part about running a coaching business and nobody really spends much time talking about it. And you have to learn how to do it. So um, number, four is number four is sales. So uh, your, marketing and me your marketing and your messaging is really designed to get people interested in your program, but you still have to convince them to open up their wallets and spend some money with you. So you need a process for doing that and you need to work through that process with enough people so that you can accurately predict how many times you're going to have to pitch what you've got before somebody says yes. Um, now the last two are organization and cash flow. So cash is kind of like oxygen for your business. Without it, your business dies. And if you're building your coaching business part time while you're still working your nine to five, then cash flow isn't as important. But once your coaching becomes your full-time job, it's critical that you understand how to use it. I cannot count how many times coaches have had to go back to work for, the comp for a company because they just ran out of money. They couldn't manage their cash flow. Um, now, when it comes to organization, the thing is, I think, a lot of, I think a lot of coaches underestimate how hard it is to work without someone holding them accountable. Right. So when you work for yourself, there's nobody who's telling you when you got to show up for work and what to focus on. And so you kind of got to build out the structures in your life that are going to force you to do what needs to be done. And that's that's just a, it's just a skill that you have to develop. And they're, they're strategies, but you just have to work through that process. So now to the big question, how much does it take? How long should it take for you to start making money as a coach? Well, as I said, I have worked with hundreds of coaches in every conceivable industry from artists to construction workers. And here is the unvarnished truth about it. You should expect to spend 18 to 24 months building your coaching business before you start making any kind of consistent or predictable income. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to be making $10,000 a month. All it means is that you'll have some confidence in exactly how much money your business is going to generate month to month. Now, that said, I do think that you can start making sales between three to six after, after running the business for three to six months, depending on how fast you can build out those six parts of the business that I talked about before. But those sales are going to be intermittent at best. 
Are there outliers? Yes. Um, should you expect to be one of them? Absolutely not. And, and that's and that's really it. That's the truth about starting a business. And if that didn't scare you off too much and you'd like some help growing your coaching business, then uh, I put a little PDF doc down in the description that walks you through a program that I have for you and uh, I'll give it a read. And if it sounds interesting, let me know and we'll set up a time to talk. But uh, I hope this clears some of the stuff up and thanks for watching.